and um, hmm. no it's talking about Esther and Vashti and it doesn't look like my handwriting but it is I did it real quick and here's what the Lord would say to you <laughs> Okay. <clears throat> um, yeah, I'm pretty worn out. I've been running all day and dealing with crises. You'd think because I'm not the pastor, I wouldn't have to deal with this stuff. But, I mean, it's a lot. I'm just being honest. Okay. <clears throat> um, what I want to do in this class is... I want us to go to the prodigal son story in Luke 15, <clears throat> and I want us to try to do our best to outline the major points of this story, okay? I'll write them on the board, and let me take this loose. All right. So, and when I say outline the story, <clears throat> what I'm looking for is your recognition of certain points that could end up being vital over and over and over in the Bible. So, we're not just talking about outlining a little prodigal son story. We're trying to put it in a simplified uh, order where we will notice it and then we can go to a bunch of different places and see it through the template of this thing. So, prodigal son. All right, give me one, one thing, somebody, hand raised. Yes, Scott? Perfect. Let's just start with two sons. Okay? But since you said man, we can go ahead and say there's a father. There's a father. Are you certain of that? What am I doing here? I used to know how to spell. But this bullet hole is keeping me from doing it right. <clears throat> okay, someone else. Kelly? Give to, Give to me, okay? So what we're gonna we're gonna describe that as inheritance. Okay? Okay, number four, somebody on this side of the room, yeah. Okay, what we're going to, we're, yes, foreign country is great. We're going to call it exile, but here's, here's the meaning. Exiled, I looked it up, it can be used in two different ways. It can be used as um, you've been kicked out of your country or you left by free will which is an expatriate, okay? Um, so the easy word here is gonna be exile. <clears throat> and, uh, but, but foreign country lets us know that that's an important reality, that this exile is. All right, number five, anybody else? That's it, that's the story, right? No. <laughs> The, okay, so let's just call it sacrifice, okay? Okay. Carol? Okay, that's a, that's actually a good one. Um, now, Famine, okay, so may I suggest that you write these things down because you're going to see this 
over and over. And if you, if you, I don't know, if you want to see this before somebody teaches it, <laughs> then it would be good to just know the theme of this because we are going to be laying this over and over and over and over and over, but it's always every story is going to bring out a different aspect, a different it's the same story, but that's going to highlight a certain part of this ongoing story. Okay, someone else. Uh, Jim? Okay. Okay, so let's, let's include death and resurrection here with the sacrifice, okay? But you're right. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Robert, did you have your hand up? Okay. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to describe that in a different way. You know, y'all are using, I don't think anybody's been wrong. I just think that to, to make it more succinct, um, we, number one that we put up here is two sons, which is, is uh, really what I had number one on my list too. Um, but um, I think it might be better to put, what did I call it? Uh, In the, not a, the invisible son. And you're going to see this invisible son show up over and over, okay? All right, so I'm just going to put invisible with liberty and, oh, sorry, that's, that's not it. Okay, uh, Kelly? Feast, perfect, perfect, feast. All right, now, with that, we should understand rejoicing. We should understand eating, and particularly eating the sacrifice. Okay? So, all right, we're... Scott? Jealousy. What? Jealousy. Jealousy. Okay, I thought he said jump seat. <laughs> I'm going. I thought he said junk food. Junk food, yeah. That's before they ate the <laughs> sacrifice. So yes, but, but. Eh. Um, jealousy, okay. So what I'm going to put down here, what did I put? Um, Um, I put down elder son, angry, and murderous, because it's going to, while, remember, the prodigal son's story is just a skeletal outline of story after story after story after story after story after story in the Bible. Okay, so... I'm adding a little fat to it, you understand, when I add murderous, but it's the same thing. And, and we'll find that this is always the case. Okay, so I bow to the elder son. Uh, angry and I'll just write murder for now. But he hadn't committed it. But it's in his heart. And, and again, the stories will prove this. Carol? Repentance. I think that's right. It's just, here's the only reason why you saw the hesitancy is that everyone makes the prodigal son story about repentance. And I'm, I'm really hesitant to almost put that down there lest it pull us to that leaning. But it certainly did. I mean, absolutely. Well, he, came to himself. he came to himself. But see, coming to yourself isn't fully the repentance. It's come to yourself and then think about repentance. So that's actually, you see, there's, there's two things into that. 
Um, but I, I mean, he did because he said, Father, I've sinned and da, 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 that is repentance. Okay, so you're right. But may I not put that one down so that we don't get off on what everybody holds that to be? Yes. Um, what did I call that? Um, you know, the repentance thing, I think I tried to cover it under returning to the father. Prodigal son. Return to the father. Oh, my God. How incredibly important is that going to be in all these stories? It is a return to the father. All right. So we're going to go over here. Number 10. Return to... To Father Ted. No, 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 I'm sorry. That's not that Catholic priest guy. Sorry. Oh, hello. All right, let's see. Uh, it just may even be right there, God, when you follow the house. I think that's included in the return to the Father because, um, you know, when I was at Berean, they always shared it in terms of returning to the Father's house. And, and I, I know that that's in there. It has to be because there is this place where the Father wants us with him. But it's a return to the Father. You know, it's a return to the Father. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, it does, and I think I, I, I could be wrong. Now, you tell me. But I want to put it here with the inheritance. Where do we put that? Right here. <clears throat> I want to put one of the most important words here, and I think you may be reaching for that. It is... The firstborn. Because it's the firstborn that gets the double portion and gets all of the, you know, there, there's, there's a bunch of stuff in relationship to um, the, uh, let, we, we'll probably, when we get to it, we'll call it the rights of the firstborn. And all, I mean, it is the inheritance, but it gives him certain rights that none of the other sons get. Did you have one, Deb? Um, you know, what I'm trying to do is run through all the stories <laughs> because, you know, I want things that will pop up every time or almost every time. Uh, make me is important because there cannot really be a return to the father unless there's a recognition, uh, of the need to be made instead of it being about you give me. So I so I'm I'm being very general on this and I sorry for did you have another one? Yeah. Change of clothes. It it definitely is part of the firstborn. But I don't know that it's identif at that as identifiable in the prodigal story uh, or in other stories as it is in the prodigal story. Now, it may be, and it's good that the things that I'm saying like this to everybody, keep the ones that, that I'm not writing up here in mind because I'm sure they're going to turn up because this is just, an, it's like an eternal pattern that's going on here. Mallory? Yeah, 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 it, it, um, let's see, did I, I cheated, I put it in there, but I didn't use it from this story, <laughs> so I can't, 
I can't say it yet, but it's in there, yeah. Because there is this desire, and that's why you said it's big, there is this incredible desire working in the Father, not just to get Christians or born again sons or family members, but to get Christ out of us. And he entreats towards that end. And it's, that's not in every story that you can see it so obvious, but if you understand that the father is not just some father in a story, but the actual heavenly father is initiating that story, then you'll see him there. Uh, yeah. Which is what I was just talking about. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Jim? Yeah, I think that's, that's in the same one, but it is, see. And that's good that we're seeing this. It, it, there's only slight differences between what you're saying, but it's all, if you'll notice, it's all pointed towards the Father and what's working in him for the Son and therefore the words or the entreaty that he gives. You see how that, it's all one thing. One's a manifestation of an inner, inner situation. Okay, Robert? Yeah, we, we, someone else mentioned that. I guess I should have written in over here, death and resurrection. Um, yeah, sacrifices is, is death and resurrection. Um, one that is not, well, let's put it this way. One that is really obvious and is a, a huge thing that is not seen in every story but is implied is um, now we know it's the feast we have the feast over here we have we have uh, with the feast is um, the sacrifice, because you're feasting on the sacrifice and rejoicing. But the feast, uh, the real feast, oh gosh, well, let's just say it must involve eating. It is not learning. It is not learning. It is eating. It is not hearing stuff and putting it in your head and trying to be spiritual or religious or whatever. For God's sake, no, no, no. You know, and what good does that do the Father? Then we just come up with all this knowledge and we go, okay, I know I'm acceptable because I have, I know scripture and, you know, stuff like that. And he's going, where is my son? We, we have to eat the lamb, you know, or the fatted calf, or it's always in relationship to the sacrifice. Okay, so let me just check everything. I think we're... Um, Um, let me say on the two sons one, you know, what's a short word for, what's, what's the word, how do you spell the word vying, two sons vying for something? Okay, so two sons, V-Y-I-N-G, vying For firstborn position. Now, it is really interesting the way that we got into the, the, the prodigal son story and we actually saw three sons in there, right? Yeah. We saw the two sons who were visible, but we saw the father drawing out the, and I call him that a lot, the with a capital, the son out of sons out of, that, that are born again. And so there is this, this reality 
that there are certain benefits, relational and material, of being the firstborn son, which in itself can cause one to be greedy or to be desirous to have that, whether it's the Lord or not. God's looking for the invisible son. That's what that's the only thing that matters ultimately. All right, so I just got the message that we're done and I have a smiley face which means don't hurt me cuz I'm making you quit. <laughs> All right, let's take a break. <laughs>